everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. I'm so excited because I love sharing experiences and we are lucky enough to have Maureen St. Germain here and Jay St. Germain here. And she's talking about her book, Beyond the Flower of Life. This is part two. Um, we, in the very beginning, we we're talking about um, the Merkaba and um, higher self and how to connect to higher self. And really, this is about, this section is about showing you how, how to connect to your higher self and then how you can use those results. In the previous section, we were talking about six weeks to just try to connect to your higher self, not high stakes, like don't go like, should I have a baby or not? But use some small, start building confidence that this higher self is a thing. It's a real thing. And that give your body, uh, mind, whatever information to show you that this actually works by getting some actual practice in the next six weeks. But this is a setup for you to try now. So Great. Thank you, Maureen. Can you step me through this process and okay, anything so you else want to talk if, about it? If you can, put your feet flat on the floor. Okay. And I recommend if you're comfortable with closing your eyes to do that. Okay. And to allow yourself to remember a time when you've had a really yummy experience. It could be walking on the beach or a hike in the mountains. It could be holding a pet or an infant. It doesn't even have to be your pet or infant. So just take a moment and allow yourself to move into that zone where it was a really yummy experience. And you'll notice that your chest, the area of your heart, actually feels a little different. And that's what it feels like when your heart chakra opens. And so you have opened your heart and you're bringing more energy in to your heart. And now slide that energy up in front of your spine called the pranic tube, all the way up past your throat chakra, your the third eye, which is between your brow, crown chakra, which is at the middle of the top of your head, and then up another 12 feet or so to what's called the eighth chakra, which is the portal to your higher self. 12, and sorry, you said how far is it? It's from the a, crown a of my head? Foot. A, f a foot. Okay, I thought you said 12 feet, 12 inches. Okay, 12 inches. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, a, a foot above your head. Okay. And um, that location is, is different for everybody, but it's approximately in that place. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the eighth chakra, which is above your head. And it's the place where your higher self would enter and break through to the 3D dimension. And we invite the higher self to join us in our heart. And the higher self is the version of you that's connected to source. And now we're connecting it to you. So we allow that energy to move into your heart. And on its way down, it widens the channel of your pranic tube, making an easy flow of energy in both directions. So we feel this living energy now in our heart and at the, high, at the higher chakras level. And we ask the higher self to work with us and to help us learn to communicate with our higher self. So mentally you might say something like, higher self, I really wanna work with you. I wanna get this communication going. Like that. And I'm asking it to work with my, what self, my day-to-day -day self, or what am I, I'm sorry, yeah. I didn't hear what you said. Work with me. So work with me, okay. Yeah. And um, so you let the higher self um, agree, yes, I'll do that. And then you say to your higher self, okay, so I will uh, ask higher self to show me a symbol or signal for yes. Oh, I see. Okay. Can, can you once I'm, I'm, I'm doing, am I supposed to be doing it? I'm actually doing it what you're talking about, but you're talking faster than I'm able to process. So let me just one second. Okay. So I'll slow it down. Sorry. So I'm it's actually, okay. I'm having it. No, it's really actually just, just, just dropping yeah. down. So I've, I'm still dropping down and asking permission. So I'm going to drop down. So if, as I understand it, I'm going to 12 inches above my head. I'm asking my higher, higher self to go down and drop into my heart. Is that right? That is correct. Okay, and then I'm asking my um, higher self. Higher self, do um, you will you please me? work with me? And I wait for an answer. Is that right? You just kind of wait for the feeling, and if you don't get a feeling, it's okay. Okay. And then you say, "I'd like to get a signal or symbol for yes." Higher self, show me my symbol or signal. For yes. Okay. Higher self, show me my symbol or signal for yes. And a person could get a visual like a color or a shape. They might 
get a sensation like an itchy ear or feel like someone touched their shoulder. You might get a certain taste in your mouth. You might hear the word yes. Higher self, again, just repeat the exercise like you're a child learning to tie their shoes. Show me again. Higher self, show me my symbol or signal for yes. Okay, can I have you pause one second? Let me see if I can get it. Okay, I'm just trying to understand the instructions and what's possible. Okay, I just saw like a high five in the sky, like someone just that's had two awesome. hands. Okay, that's so that's actually, that's actually in the book. So okay, or okay. thumbs or thumbs up. Yeah, I just got a kind of like a high five. Okay, got it. so that's one. That's, that's mine. That's a yes. Yes. Okay. Now ask your higher self to show you your symbol or signal for no. Yeah, I just saw, um, <laughs> it's like a, you know how they used to have those old wells and there would like be a bucket and the b bucket just dropped infinitely to the bottom of the well and it just kept on going. <laughs> I love it. That's okay, that's great. the one I have. Okay. okay. So we say thank you. And then thank the last you. one is higher self, give me my symbol or signal for neutral. Okay. Yeah, I just saw a wave going in and out of the ocean. Fantastic. Okay, Okay, that's pretty cool. So that's pretty standard. Um, a lot of people get some form of a horizon line, like what you described, as a symbol or signal for neutral. And then in the book, I actually have a table of symbol, symbols that people get. Perfect. And the reason I put the table in is so that when you look at your symbol – you can say, oh, yeah, mine matches this one, or it's similar. Mm -hmm. You know, some people see a sphere. Some people feel uh, bands of light. Some people hear the word yes. And so everyone's different, mm. but you can count on it. So then what you do is you say, okay, this is great. Okay, now let's practice one time. Higher self, show me my yes symbol and let it appear right away. As soon as you get it, just say, okay. Okay. Higher self, show me my no symbol. Okay. Higher self, show me neutral. Okay. And then you ask about things you don't care about. So let's play, like in girl talk, um, you know, some days we have to decide whether we should wash our hair today or tomorrow. And we really don't care what day we wash our hair. We just want to make sure that we it's good when we need it to be good. And sometimes you don't know when you're going to have an interview or a conversation with somebody important. So you could ask your higher self, higher self, is it in my highest and best good to shampoo my hair today? Okay. Simple question that you don't really care about one or the other. You can ask about food choices. You can ask about traffic and, you know, where is it in my highest best good to take this route? And if you get a no, then you ask another question. Higher self, is it in my highest best good to take that route? And you keep asking to get the yes that allows you to move forward. Okay, one wait, can I ask you pause one second? So when I'm actually okay. doing that, I'm getting kind of like, how do I know this is my mind or my higher self? You so know. that's why it's called a practice period. Okay, got it. So I don't, I don't know if this is my higher self or not. Yeah, and okay. since you don't care, and you don't care whether you do one way or the other, it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. So let's say we're talking about the shampoo business. Yeah. And um, you don't care. Um, you know it's on your schedule and, you know, it's pretty open, so you're not worried about that. So your higher self says, wash your hair today. So you you wash your hair. And then you have a random opportunity to interview somebody really awesome that you'd love to interview. And they can only do it today. Mm -hmm. And you've done your hair and you're feeling good about how you look. It's a silly thing, but it's unimportant until that moment when you realize, oh, wow, I'm so glad I did my hair today. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's that kind of reaction. Ah, uh, I got it. So you're like, well, I didn't, I washed my hair even though my higher self said, um, my higher self said yes. And I even washed my hair yesterday. I know that I don't usually do that, but I wash my hair and then you just follow whatever it says. Cause as I, you're saying the first section, I'm going to do what it says, regardless of whether it makes rational sense to me, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to say okay. yes. 
Exactly. And then, and then I'm just going to wait to go like, why did I wash my hair? <laughs> and then maybe yeah. something will occur. And, and you, your idea is you don't care. Mm -hmm. um, and you're willing to play because it is about playing. It's about being mm. frivolous and playing. So you don't care whether you go to this restaurant or that restaurant. You ask your higher self and you run into a friend that you've been looking for. Um, so all kinds of cool things start to happen. And you get a wonderful series of experiences. One time I was teaching in China and my husband and I were on Skype or whatever to um, make a plan for when I got back. And he said, you know, we're going in. We lived in San Diego at the time and we were going to drive to, to Los Angeles, which is about three hours to go to a museum and hear a friend of mine perform. Mm -hmm. And he says to me, you know, the Broad Museum just opened. Let's go there first. And I proceeded to go on a little rant. That's a terrible idea. I'm going to be flying for 15 hours. I might want to sleep in, you know, on and on. You know, how could you even suggest such a thing? Okay. I'm laughing about this now. And then I finished with, but I will ask my higher self. And if my higher self do it, I'll do it. And sure enough, my higher self said, yes. Well, on that uh, um, trip, standing in line at the Broad Museum, I met a woman who I ended up standing in line with her family. And as I'm walking back to stand with that family, my guides tell me, you need to talk to these people. So we're chatting for a few minutes and the woman hands me her ticket, says, you need to hold on to this in case we get separated. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, I looked at the name and then I looked up and said the name and I knew a family from Ohio. I, I used to know a family with that name. It was a long, unusual name, uh, but they're from Ohio. And the man said, well, we're from Ohio. And without skipping a beat, his mother, the grandma who was with them, looked at me and said, are you Maureen? <laughs> and it turns out that she was one of my mother's best friends when I was a teenager. Oh, great. And they, you know, they lived nearby and the, the men were in the same industry. So they palled around a lot and they were still friends, still corresponding, even though they didn't live in the same city. Well, if that weren't enough, then I said, well, you know, we have this apartment in New York. If you ever want to stay there. Uh, we don't use it very often. Uh, well, we have two kids that are in school in New York. We would love to use your apartment. Wow. And if that weren't enough, then one day I called Mike and I said, uh, do you think either of your daughters would be willing to work for me? And I ended up with one of his daughters who turned out to be one of the best employees I ever had as a part-time helper. And when she left, she sent her friend who also was equally wonderful. And I sent my mother a picture of the two of us. And she was also in awe that I could attract such an experience. And she said to me, you know, honey, Pat and your father were first cousins. Oh, wow. I didn't know that either. Wow. I love it. All right. I, I love how um, I have, I love when synchronicities come and, and, and. Did what I didn't want to do. Yeah. All right. So I have a question because what I don't understand is how this has to do with the star technohedron. How does okay. how does this relate? <laughs> it's related because it's like getting permission to drive to get a driver's license. This field is so powerful that you, in the old days, before it was fully anchored into the reality, people had to get permission to drive it, and the way they got permission was to ask their higher self. I see. So I see. Okay. Got it. So I was imagining that you're going to do some visualization with the star. You don't need this. The star is just, well, is it? There is a whole protocol and that takes about 20 hours to teach. So I'm not going to be uh, that here. Okay. So that's a whole protocol on how to yeah, and I get do the have vibration. DVD for people to use to learn how to operate this thing. Wow. Okay. And what, when I learn how to operate that thing through your DVD, how's it any different than what we just experienced? What's, what's, what do you, what are the benefits of learning okay, how to do that? So the higher self is, you know, you remember that movie, um, the navigator where this kid found a, a spaceship and the computer kept saying, you're the navigator, you have to decide where to go. So when you have your higher self functioning and this guy functioning, they work as a team because your higher self is going to give you 5D directions. You and I, in our 3D self, could give this vehicle directions, but we might we might not do a good job because we don't know what we're doing. I see. So this is kind of the star is in some ways 
um, helping manifest things in other dimensions that just our 3D that self show cannot. Up here. That show right, up. I see. And then the higher self connection is something you can use every day. I had a, I have a client in uh, Australia who is Indian, and he said on a call last week, he said, I use my higher self to make a curry. And he said, it was the best curry I've ever had. And I was putting in my higher self was going to use this ingredient, this ingredient. And he said, it was so interesting because it was never any combination that I would have used. And it was the best curry I've ever had. So you use higher self in everyday life as well as um, you, the creation stuff you do in the Merkaba. Uh, okay. So if I'm trying to create, let's say like want more peace, less division in this universe, then I would actually go to the Merkaba and try to like create a to universe. Peace for yourself first. And then, then for the highest and best good of the planet, because if you were just to create peace for, for the whole planet, you would be interfering with free will. Uh... So you're always doing it for the highest and best good. And that way, everyone gets to level up as fast as they can. So you're giving them a nudge. You're giving them the support that they could do it, you know, when people are waffling. Um, but you're not creating an environment that says they have to. Got it. I get it. All right. So tell me a little bit um, in the book, um, Beyond the Flower of Life, we've actually gone through an experience. And in the book, does it talk about, does it talk about the 20-hour um, version or what is it, how does it help? Um, how is it connected to the Merkaba and what yeah. else is in the book? The 20 hour version uses a lot of visuals to help people get the concepts. And once you get them in your awareness, you never have to work at it again. Mm. So it's a little bit of, of complexity that they can learn um, through watching the video. And this book is like a follow up for two things it's a follow up for anyone who wants to grow spiritually. And it's a follow-up for anyone who wants to take their Merkaba work to another level. Mm. That's what I call beyond the flower of life. Got it. The actual teaching of that Merkaba is taught in what's called the flower of life workshop. Got it. Excellent. Okay. And you have another book, 5D. So what is that book? That book is called Waking Up in 5D. And it... Uh, won a bunch of awards. The, the Beyond the Flower of Life is so new that it, it, it hasn't been eligible to win awards yet. But um, Waking Up in 5D uh, won Book of the Year, and um, the, it, was, it was voted the most, what is the word I want? The best-selling book in America by independent retailers. And it's all about how people are having what we're calling five fifth-dimensional experiences and not knowing what's going on. And so this book not only explains it, but shows people how to level up proactively rather than, because what happens is when we become fifth dimensional, we don't always know it. And here's a classic example. Let's say you have a favorite crystal, mm -hmm. okay? And you put it down, you've had it in your pocket and you put it down with your keys and everything else. And you come back and it's not there. And you think to yourself, I just put it there. How can it be gone? How can it disappear? And very often it's because you're in a place, what I would call bliss. And that blissful place, that yummy place is 5D. It's where we're all headed all the time. So um, making a clear intention or making a statement, if my crystal is in a higher dimension, I want it back. Thank you. <laughs> what happens is it shows back up. And, you know, I, this was happening to me all the time. You know, 20 years ago, this was happening to me all the time. And one day it happened to one of my kids right in front of me. And I said, Oh honey, we'll just ask her to come back, put everything back in your book bag um, and finish your story. And then we'll go back and look. And that's exactly what we did. We made the request and he'd already pulled everything out of his book bag, put everything back. <clears throat> when he went back after he finished his story, the item in question was right on top. Hmm. So it's, and so there's another, there's several dimensions that are happening that go be above and beyond our, understanding about what this world is about right think of the colors we know for example that our human ability to measure and, and record color is within a certain bandwidth we also know that birds have a different set of bandwidth that's higher than ours we know that cats for example can see uh what we would call infrared mm -hmm. so what we're doing is accessing a, a higher vibration mm. 
that is beyond what we agreed to experience here. And since we're all leveling up anyway, when we move up to that higher vibe and set something down, and then we slide back into third, we can't see it. When we're in the higher vibe, we are setting it down and we can find it again when we move into a place of peacefulness. I had one friend who is a very well-known spiritual teacher in her own right, and she said that she threw a, a favorite ruby ring in her drawer after a late night. And then the next day she said, I better put that away. That's a family heirloom. And she couldn't find it. Tears everything out of that drawer. It's not there. So every time she's in the drawer, she starts looking for it. Finally, she says to herself after three months, okay, it's lost. I let it go. I'm grateful for whatever. And it'll be fine. Next time she opened the drawer, it was right there on top. <laughs> all right so then when you reach a higher dimension you may have things that go missing are there any other signs aside from things that go missing well that's one of the biggest proofs because practically everybody has had that happen yes um and it's especially frustrating when you don't know what it is that's happening mm -hmm. so that's one of the markers another way you know you're in uh, you have been in a higher place, is that everything's going smoothly and then something happens that pushes your buttons or frustrates you and you drop into your old behaviors of frustration, irritation or whatever. And you think, oh, it was such a yummy day. What happened? You know, mm -hmm. so you're in hindsight, you can tell that you were in that higher place. Mm -hmm. You don't always know because when you're in that yummy place, you don't announce yourself, oh, I feel so yummy. Oh, this is, I mean, you might say this is a yummy experience. You might say this is a beautiful seashore or, you know, I love hiking in the mountains um, and go into that blissful place. And until you've trained yourself to recognize that, oh, wow, that's fine. I'm in five. That's so cool. Generally, you don't notice it until after you slide back down and you go, whoa, what happened? You know, what happened? <laughs> I love it. Okay, so we've we kind of a preview of your book, Waking Up in Five D. We've been talking about the um, Beyond the Flower of Life. Thank you. This was just delightful. Thank you for um, indulging us in a, a beautiful experience, so that we can actually connect to our higher self. We've been talking to Marine Jane Saint Germain. Thank you so much. My pleasure. What fun.